Now, question is this point of care as we estimation is really worth in your practice? Is it really worth in diagnosing diabetes? So, uh, so this subject was discussed in EDM meeting and it will be reviewed here by Dr. Jay Prakash. Jay Prakash is consultant endocrinologist, is Medical Trust Hospital. Kochi, I think here it is little Anna Kulam, the same thing, Anna Kulam and Kochi. And uh, he is a winner of several awards, a lot many publications to his credit, and is participating in so many calls. So over to Dr. Jay Prakash. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Mathur, for the kind introduction. It's a privilege to be here in this uh, forum to discuss the um, ADA 2021 salient aspects. So the topic uh, which I'll be discussing is uh, the usage of point of care HbA1c testing for the diagnosis of diabetes. Uh, there was a, a debate in ADA on this and uh, uh, I will be covering that. We know HbA1c has been useful in managing diabetes uh, since almost two decades now. It has been well validated, well used uh, for managing patients with diabetes because of its uh, reasons being that is easily done, uh, the availability has improved and it correlates well with uh, the outcomes, microvascular complications and cardiovascular disease. The correlation with HbA1c has been well uh, validated and documented and all the studies and all the patient outcome data that we are generating uh, with respect to patients with diabetes are mainly uh, now based on HP1C results. So the point of care HP1C testing has, has been available and that is uh, as the chairperson told that has been useful but the question is whether it is useful for the diagnosis of uh, diabetes. Diabetes diagnosis uh, is uh, a major decision for the patient and for the doctor because uh, all the decisions in terms of treating the disease and putting the diagnosis is based on that and whether the point of care testing is well validated enough to diagnose HP and uh, to diagnose diabetes that's what uh, the debate was. So uh, the point of care testing is uh, as uh, Professor Madhura had told is uh, it's there is actually a definition for point of care testing it's an investigation which is uh, carried out in the clinical setting where the patient is there or even at the patient's home for which uh, the result is available without validating with an external lab and uh, mostly the results are immediately available within 5 to 10 minutes. So that's what a point of care testing is and uh, there are various uh, methods of HbA1c point of care testing. So uh, whether that is good enough for making the diagnosis of diabetes. So there were uh, the debate was uh, uh, by two uh, persons, one uh, uh, Dr. J. Shambrook from Australia. Uh, he was the one who was speaking for uh, the usage of HbA1c point of care testing and uh, Dr. David Sachs was the one who was against uh, using uh, HbA1c as a point of care testing uh, for diagnosis. So uh, first I will discuss the points uh, by Dr. J. which he had mentioned that uh, one major advantage of using uh, point of care testing is that the time which was needed to get the result. Uh, it is available in, in a matter of uh, 10 minutes and as the patient is there in the clinic itself you get the HbA1c result and just like any other HbA1c sample it doesn't matter whether it is fasting or whether uh, the patient uh, the timing of the day it doesn't matter. So at the clinic visit you have the result and uh, that uh, improves uh, the compliance and uh, it decreases the length of uh, stay in, in, in the clinic or in the hospital. That's probably all the more important in, in the current times of uh, uh, pandemic where uh, the length of interaction is to be minimized. It also reduces sampling errors. Uh, you, you need to have a finger prick uh, just like uh, the glucometer testing. So uh, the errors while taking the sample is minimized. Uh, and also the technical issues, uh, even though they're uh, now minimized, but the sampling errors and uh, in the lab, which can uh, errors which can occur is also not there. 
Uh, the other advantage of getting an immediate result was also stressed by him by uh, you get uh, the result and the immediate feedback and the counseling can be done uh, rather than you uh, give the test and then asking the patient to come back on another day and then um, uh, counseling about the result you get the immediate uh, result and counseling at that time uh, the economy aspect is also there uh, every clinic visit uh, you the patient has to spend time and money and uh, two visits to show the test report uh, versus a single visit the result get getting in five to ten minutes uh, so obviously it's more advantageous for the patient also now we know that uh, uh, teleconsultation and phone consultations are there but then uh, counseling the patient with the result when the physical uh, consultation uh, it uh, um, uh, in, in everybody's experience is better in terms of uh, the patient acceptance and probably compliance. So uh, these were the ease of use and uh, uh, the less technical issues were the ones which were actually stressed by uh, Dr. J in terms of its uh, favorable uh, points for diagnosis of uh, uh, HB1C, uh, diagnosis of diabetes with point of care HB1C. Uh, the person who was speaking against Dr. David Sachs uh, uh, against the usage of point of care HPNC testing, uh, his uh, points were mainly uh, uh, stressed on the accuracy of the result. Again, as I said, you are making a diagnosis of a disease uh, which has got its own long term implications. So, you need to be the test to be very accurate to give the confidence of uh, diagnosis and also treating the patient. So according to Dr. David Sachs, uh, the accuracy in terms of uh, this point of care testing uh, may not be as good as a lab HP1C result. So uh, it's actually a CLIA wavered result. Uh, clinical laboratory uh, um, investigation analysis wavered result were uh, the, the HB1C point of care kits doesn't need an external validation. So whether this is good enough uh, to diagnose or to make a diagnosis uh, is a question which is raised by him. And there are studies which have shown that there is discrepancy between the point of care test kits and the lab values. Uh, other issues like uh, the HB hemoglobin variants, which are probably relevant to our uh, population also, the, uh, the thalassemia variant and sickle cell variant. These variants are not, uh, we don't have the data whether it can affect the point of care HB1C kids. So again, making a diagnosis uh, according to Dr. David Sachs uh, may not be uh, good enough. Other co-existent conditions like anemia, CKD, liver disease, What's the impact of that? Uh, these diseases, which are actually very common in patients with diabetes, uh, whether they have an impact of this in the point of care uh, kits, uh, again, uh, we don't know. Uh, uh, these kits are costly. That's one of the aspects which was raised against this. The cost of the kit, these are not cheap. Unlike a glucometer testing, uh, it doesn't come out cheap. And uh, the current technical issue, again, even though it's a drop of blood, but the kits need, unlike a glucometer strip, the uh, conduct of the test should be uh, done properly. And uh, it, if it's not temperature maintained, if it's not maintained in the correct sampling, then the result may be varied. So the accuracy may be, uh, uh, is the main point which was uh, stressed uh, by, uh, as a debate against this. So after uh, the dis uh, debate, there was a uh, 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 talk by Dr. Randall Little, uh, where she tried to bring both the points together. So uh, what was discussed by Dr. Little was that, uh, yes, there are uh, fallacies in the HP1C point of care kits, but then um, now uh, some of the latest kits, like the Bayer uh, kits, they use NGSP standard protocols. So the National Glycohemoglobin Standardized Protocols, which was derived from the DCCT data, uh, the kits uh, in these uh, well-validated point-of-care testing kits, they perform as good as uh, the, the standard lab method of doing HB1C. So 
the advantage is obviously being um, having an in immediate result, having the result uh, in the patient uh, where the patient is, is there in the clinic and uh, using the right kind of kits that, that was being stressed by uh, Dr. Randall. So uh, I think this uh, summarizes uh, the uh, usage of HbO1c point of care testing as, as far as the diagnosis, the idea debate which had occurred and there was no uh, consensus and still uh, I think for monitoring the idea recommends this but for the diagnosis of diabetes the point of care HbO1c testing kits are still not well validated to be made to properly with the improvement and with more of data it would be made uh, for the diagnosis, uh, it would be recommended for the diagnosis of diabetes also the point of care HPNC testing. So thank you.